customization. Who doesn't like to change the way their software looks? Blender is well known for it because you can not only change the layouts in crazy shapes, but you can also change the colors. And people have done that for many years now. You can change the uh, basically everything in, in Blender, all, every property, everything is, uh, has a property, a color, and now in 2.8, even more options that you can change. So for example, in 2.7, I made over the years, I worked in this one called Flatty Light, which is a light, uh, very flat and a bit bright to work in they uh, during the day and uh, I, I quite liked it actually then I made a dark version of it that it was a bit tinted it was a bit more contrasty but I, I, I kind of liked it over time this actually got picked up for being part of the blender 2.8 default then we remove the coloring uh, if you follow these videos you probably are familiar with it so over time we ended up with this the default blender theme it's a dark theme with a blue accent and that's pretty much it the thing is that all the previous themes from previous version, they're still there, they're still available, but there are widgets, for example, that are not defined in these old themes because they're old, because they, Blender has new things like a toolbar, the active tool is new, or here the top bar is new. So every theme pretty much has to be fixed to the new layout. So why not? taking the uh, opportunity to just make new ones. Ask the community, you, to contribute and post their best themes, their most, uh, the most, the, the coolest themes they can make. So how do you do this? Well, I made a, a thread here in, in the developer, um, the forums, devtalk.blender.org, is called for content themes, where you can read the instructions, how to do it, but basically it's pretty straightforward um, how you make it. It hasn't changed that much from 2.7, but there are a few new settings. So in the user preferences, I would recommend you in order to make a new theme is to reset to default because there are new properties that we already set up that didn't exist. For example, the roundness of uh, the widgets or they are not defined in the old themes because they, this option didn't exist in 2.7. Now it does, now you can change how round a widget is going to be. For example, there is a new um, editor outline, which is a line between the editors that is, makes it uh, a, a bit more clear to read which editor you're in. And um, that wasn't in 2.7, for example. So you also have to change that. The icons, they are now monochrome icons. They have one color, which is response to the text in the regular, for the time being, <laughs> in the regular um, kind of button. So this is how you can change it. You may want to change that as well. And the uh, icons now have a context color. So if there is an object, we color it in orange. You will probably see that in the add menu, for example, or in the outliner. So if you want to change that, you can make it also monochrome or you can just give it another tint and it will reflect here. I wouldn't suggest changing it that much because for people actually uh, following tutorials, it's probably good to get familiar with at least one tint. You should, yeah, you, of course you can do whatever you want, it's your theme, but um, maybe it's good that some sort of convention, maybe make it less saturated, more saturated, but it, it's like changing the color of X, Y, Z, right? Like you can, you can make X pink if you want, it looks amazing, but <laughs> just, just to give it a bit more um, consistency. Gizmos also have their own colors. For example, when you have a lamp, uh, sorry, a camera or a lamp type spot, you have this gizmo, for example. There, this you can change the colors out as well here. That's a new thing. Overridden for states on the, um, you know, when you press I and it becomes keyframed. Well, uh, there's a new state also for overridden, which you should take into account. So there are so many little things here and there that were added that I would recommend you to start with the default and then start changing the settings per widget. It's a, like a million settings that you have to change. So I would recommend once you're done, there are even new editors now, once you're done, uh, like picking up the color, the accent color that you want, for example, you should save this, um, um, this theme by just clicking on plus and then you like my awesome theme. 
exclamation mark. It's going to get renamed to a more sane name. You save it, and it should now show up on your uh, config folder. So where you save your, your 2.8 uh, settings, so scripts, and then inside scripts, preset where your startup.blend file is. Interface theme, and then there will be an XML file right here where you can uh, just basically drag and drop in a comment in DevTalk, and it should show up there. So it's pretty straightforward. Once you have it, uh, I would recommend instead of just going here and change it, change the same color everywhere, try to make your life easier by editing with a, with a text editor. Find the color that you want and then just do like a search and replace. I would do that. That's, that's something I like to, to do because then that way it's easier. Once you change it in your text file, you can just apply it again. It's like my awesome theme and it's going to be applied here. So you can test, change, use a text editor to change it and then come back and reflect it. Um, I think that that's easier. The theme editor in Blender could have so many, <laughs> so much improvements. Could be just one toggle, but um, it's work that it hasn't been done yet. There is a few new editors that you have to take into account as well. There is the, um, the top bar and the status bar. So the status bar is this thing here at the bottom. It's very simple. It has a um, header color, which you can just change, and a header text color, which is the text. So very simple. Um, other editors are not so simple, like the top bar, for example. This is just a heads up that if you want to change the top here, this is the header color. So the background is the header, for example. Then um, the tabs themselves, um, they're somewhere else. There are tab widgets now. So if you change the tab here, you won't find it. This is because it, it's a work in progress at the moment, how the, the tabs get their name. Before they were per editor, but we're thinking of moving it uh, into a widget, the same way the color pickers and everything else works. But for the time being, you just don't spend too much time trying to change this. The tab active and inactive background are the currently are the ones that you can see, for example, in um, the other editors, for example, the 3D view, if you change the tab um, color here, it, it does change here. So for these kind of tabs, um, yeah, it works. But for the tabs up here and in the new navigation sidebar, you would find it in the user interface tab here, tab item, tab inner, and inner selected. So inner selected is basically the background of the active tab. Text selected is the color, and this is how you can change it. The background itself of this navigation bar is actually per editor. So for example, in the properties, you should go here and you change the background navigation bar background, and then that way you can theme it. So yeah, the theming of Blender could use so much work, but we are close to the beta, very close. We have one week, and it would be nice to shift with some cool uh, themes. So bear with us until this system gets fixed and go through the thread just to make it make it a bit more pretty. It's um, a lot of work. It can take hours to to make a nice theme, but I would suggest you to open complex files with it. Go to the graph editor, the dope sheet, the um, text editor. How does it look? Um, just, just go through all of them and um, change it accordingly. But remember to use a text editor just so you can more easily search and replace. Once you're happy with it, I would also recommend using, for example, a um, checking for contrast in your text. There is this very nice website, WebAIM, where you can basically give colors, give it the uh, colors to the um, text and the background, and it will give you a rating for the uh, accessibility. So if it's actually visible for people um, that uh, yeah maybe have some visual impairment or in general, actually, it's really good that the contrast is good enough for everyone and to not get tired and yes. So I hope you are as excited as I am. I am. I am very excited because the themes are really what make Blender different for everyone. So please contribute whatever you have in mind. You can also, if you feel nostalgic, 
the you can just grab the 2.7 theme <laughs> and just fix it for 2.8 if you want if you don't like change um, some things will have to change for example the um, the roundness is new and other other items the color the icons but there are ways to make it work so uh, thank you for watching and I will see you very 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 soon.